So, Invincible Season 1. I'll admit this is somewhat off-brand to me, as I tend to talk more about fantasy and books over TV and superhero shows. But it was either this or that Dota TV show that's more interesting to watch if you look at it as a game of telephone more than anything else, and uh, this seemed more interesting. That said, I'm not sure what I can tell you about Invincible that isn't immediately obvious. It's an animated TV show put out by Amazon that's based on the Invincible comic books. It's getting a bizarre comparison to the boys, of all things. Yeah, I don't really buy that one, if you couldn't tell. And it's been mostly praised so far from what I've seen. So, how was it? I fought to keep this planet safe. Your power's gotta be due any day now, son. Now, I don't like the boys. And this is getting compared to that quite a bit. So, do I like Invincible? Are you using your timeout? I get a timeout? Why do I get a timeout? Hey, I didn't invent the rule. Yeah, actually. For one thing, I just like animation more. It's, there's far more you can do with an animation than live action, and it allows for a greater amount of artistic interpretation. And I like this art style as it feels like a comic in motion. Even if the actual animation can be a bit cheap at times. It's not low rent anime, but it's a bit we don't have the budget for it at this time kind of thing. The character designs are good too. You can tell a lot about the characters just by looking at them. Like, Omni-Man costume here is mostly white and red, and the titular Invincible is more blue and black, with some yellow hinting at some conflict to come with the, between these two characters. This continues with the group in the opening scene here that's recognizably the Justice League, but not. It's recognizable enough to give you the general idea while obviously being different. It hits that good color balance that good superhero teams tend to hit. You know, one of the things that's often said about the Avengers or the Justice League is that they just have a really good mix of colors with all the greens, the blacks, the blues, the reds, all that. And I suppose this is as good a time as any to bring up. Yeah, that happens in the first episode, so it's not a spoiler. But this is where I feel the boys ends up being different from Invincible. The superhero opening here is juxtaposed against the violence that comes afterward. But the boys does the same trope, but their only real point is superheroes are stupid. When Invincible does this, the main idea seems to be being a hero is going to be a lot bloodier than you think. To the extent this first season has a theme, that appears to be it. Our hero Mark wants to help people, but he's consistently screwing up. So this is a story of learning how to do the right thing. Very early on, there's a fight with this guy named Alan the Alien, and it's initially just a punch him up. But at some point, our hero and Alan here just start to talk. And it turns out Alan has been coming to the wrong planet. Your planet signed up for the program. See? Request from Urath for evaluation. Urath? This is Earth! Earth. Yes! Not Urath. No! Is that with an E or a U? E! Oh, I'm in so much trouble. Well, thanks for letting me know. I'm Alan, by the way. So obviously, not every threat needs to be solved with violence. A lot of episodes serve a similar purpose. Even if the learning to balance your superheroics with normal life trope is a bit overplayed at this point, I still find it enjoyable. Since I brought up Alan, I just have to say I love this guy. I actually really enjoy all of the characters, except for Rex. Couldn't have won that fight without you. Oh! Except we did! From the Mauler twins who are always arguing about who's the clone to the various members of the teen team, like Robot, or just Mark's mom and his gay best friend. They all have distinct personalities and, and don't just fall into any one specific trope. That said, Mark's girlfriend can be a little inconsistent at times, but eh, 
teenagers. And the good thing about the focus on characters is that this show does focus on interpersonal drama quite a bit. So having good characters to play that drama off is, you know, obviously going to be important. This is helped by the great voice acting, most notably J.K. Simmons as Omni-Man, and yes, everyone is making the pictures of Spider-Man joke, but the whole cast does a good job of delivering the correct emotion at the time. There's never any sense that anyone is just phoning it in, even though with the pandemic going on, someone was probably literally phoning this in. The show certainly isn't for everyone. If you don't like excessive gore or animated shows in general, it's not gonna change your mind. And really, it is just a straight superhero show, but bloodier. That said, I liked it. Character focus, cohesive themes, good art style, some true gut punches. So, I would recommend it for what it's worth. Invincible. Oh yeah? <laughs> Little optimistic, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I just bought you and I think you're quite invincible. I guess I'm an animation YouTuber now. Okay, here's my avatar. I no, it's not very good. And I guess I should start yelling about Seth MacFarlane now. Haha, uh -huh, you only had three successful animated comedy shows. Off, you talentless hack. Am I doing this right?